Good morning. Welcome to Sanctuary Cyber Sunday Services. My name is Pastor Tony Lester. It gives a great joy and privilege to thank you for joining us, and we welcome you and uh, invite you to uh, be as one in our midst as we come together to uh, praise and worship and to honor the Lord our God. We thank the Lord for what God has as has done and what God is doing in the times in which we live right now. We've got a word from the Lord today and we've got some clear direction and instruction as to what it is that God has put in place and has always put in place from, from the beginning of time even to this day and even for the days yet to come. But I don't mean uh, to, to, to act like I'm not aware of what's going on in the times in which we live. But what I am here to announce and to declare is that God is not slack. God is not uh, weak. God is not wishy-washy. And God is not uh, complacent. God is totally aware and in control of all things that are going on in these days. Uh, Paul made it very clear that in the last days that perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves and haters of God. We'd like to welcome you this morning. We'd like to ask that you would grab your Bible and that you would come and relax. Uh, thank you for inviting us into your home and thank you for allowing us to share these moments together. So without any further delay, let us begin our time together as we uh, worship and we seek God's face and we're actually uh, seeking God for a, a word for us today. Hallelujah. Let's bow our hearts in a word of prayer. And as we prepare for prayer, I'd like to ask that you would grab your Bible or that you would grab your device for wherever you're going to pull the scriptures up and that you will uh, prepare yourselves uh, for our lesson, for our lesson for today. Our lesson for today will be coming from the Gospel of St. Luke, Gospel of St. Luke and chapter number 17. Chapter 17, we'll be focusing on uh, verses 11 through, through 19. So let's bow our hearts in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you this morning for, for this time together. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to gather. God, we come, Lord, with great expectancy in our hearts, expecting that you will speak and that you will make known, oh God, your oracles and your, 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 your wisdom and make known, oh God, what, is, uh, uh, your, what, what it is that you would like for us to be able to understand in relation to the work that you're doing in our lives and the work you're doing in the lives of those who are living in this world that we, are, that we share and occupy together. Bless our time, Lord, and we honor you and we thank you in advance for we ask this blessing in Jesus' name and for his name's sake. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Amen. And we'd like to thank you for, for taking this time. As we uh, uh, have announced by now, we hope that you could have, uh, that you would have your Bible. And I'd like to ask if you would turn with me to the Gospel of St. Luke and chapter, chapter 17. And we want to read just uh, a few verses. We want to read a few verses. We want to uh, read from verses 11 through, uh, through 14. And, uh, and, and, and I like to, uh, as, as we read, I like to, 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 to also uh, ask that you read along with me. Starting at verse 11. And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. As he entered into a certain village, there met him 10 men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. As they went, they were cleansed. So at this point, what we like to do is uh, announce the fact that we are, are beginning a new uh, sermonic series, and uh, this series uh, has has stemmed from um, 
from this verse, but it also uh, allows us to, to, to capture and to stay within the mindset of Thanksgiving. Uh, we, we just celebrated Thanksgiving, um, you know, and, and, and as we celebrated Thanksgiving, we, 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 we've, we've expounded on, on the true nature of Thanksgiving and the reasons to be thankful. But in, in, in this text, we're going to start this series off by, by uh, entitling this Return, Return to Thanksgiving. That's our series title, Return to Thanksgiving. And as it stands right now, we, 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 we will probably find ourselves in at least a two or three part uh, sermon uh, series, uh, our lessons, to make it so we can really get into this passage of scripture and, and from it we can, we can really get some understanding in relation to, listen, in relation to how the scripture applies to what's going on right now. Now, 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 you know, I, I believe that God's word is, is relevant for everything that's going on. And not only that, because God is the writer of the scripture and, the, and, and, and because he's the writer of the scripture and, and he is eternal. None of the things that are going on today are taking God by surprise. But what it is that I, I have found is that in every situation that we find ourselves in and in every situation that arises, we'll see that the God, the God of the Bible, he is the same. That means he doesn't change. He, he was the same yesterday. He's the same today. And he's the same forevermore. So as we get into Luke chapter 17, we'd like to begin by unpacking our sermon series, Return to Thanksgiving, by allowing these verses to, 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 to take us into the word of God. And in all that we get, we pray that we can get some understanding. Are you ready? So we start at verse 11. And, 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 and I like to say that, you know, the, the, the thing that's very interesting about the Lord Jesus is that before he gets to this point in verse 11, we find that he was talking and teaching and he was expounding to his disciples and those that follow him about the significance and the importance of how to forgive, why to forgive, and that there are going to be offenses and things that are going to happen. Wherefore, we all need to realize that we should give room for uh, for people to to be what they are, to be who they are, and that and that there will be things that are going to cause us offense. There are things that people are going to subject us to where God is saying it's going to require us to forgive. But as we get to verse 11, I, I, I love the fact that the Lord Jesus really masters in being able to teach something. And then after he teaches it, he will take us into different episodes and experiences to expound and to, and to amplify what he was teaching and allow him to demonstrate it in ways that we need to understand. I do say in the ways that we should understand because see, God's ways are not our ways and God's, not, God's thoughts are not our thoughts. So when we start thinking about God, we have to be careful because oftentimes our problem is we limit God to what we can do and what we will do. Uh, that's, that, that, is, that is one of the problems that, that we find ourselves being confronted with and having to uh, contend with as it pertains to man in relation to God. What I believe, and I need prayer because this is a very uh, abstract for me, but I, my heart is so passionately involved in it. What I found is that God is not like us. And in order for us to understand what God is like, the Lord Jesus, God in the flesh, came so we could see God in action as it pertains to him being Savior and Lord. Jesus being Savior, rescuer, deliverer, and Lord. Lord meaning he is in control, he is master, and he reigns and he rules. All right? All right. So so now, now so as we get to verse 11, here it is. Jesus is going to take these disciples into a uh, I don't want to call it a it, yeah, it's an object lesson. It's almost like as if he takes them into a a metaphor. He tells a story to give understanding to what it is he's teaching. 
But this is not a metaphor. This is a real life adventure. This is something that really actually happened. And he starts off and it says, I like verse 11 because it says, and it came to pass. In other words, this really happened. As the Lord Jesus in verse 11, as he went to Jerusalem, he's on his way to Jerusalem. Now, now let's pause there. He's on his way to Jerusalem. And when he got to, he was on his way to Jerusalem because that's where he was going to be crucified. In the midst of being totally aware of what he's about to go through, he purposes that to pass through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. He, he purposes, in other words, he he, he, he is on his way to Jerusalem, but he purposes to lead and take a journey that's going to take him right through the midst, right through the middle of Samaria and Galilee. Uh, so, 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 so we have to understand why is he, why is he doing this? He, he purposes to go where there are some specific individuals there that he wants to to, to interact, watch this, he wants to, he's going to, he's going to, he's going to interrupt their situation unannounced. He's going to show up with a purpose and a plan in mind. Oh, hallelujah. He's going to show up with a purpose and a plan in mind. What is Jesus up to? It says when he entered a certain village, that means he had a specific village in mind and when he had this village in mind, there are, there's a place. And then there's, he says, there, 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 in this certain village, there met him, there met him 10 men that were lepers, which stood afar off. All right. Which stood afar off. So he goes to a specific village, not just any village. And he's going to this place to, to interact with specific people. He is, his intention is to go and to meet these 10 men that were lepers. And I like it because these 10 men that were lepers, their posture and their position, the place, then the people, and then the posture and position of which they find themselves inter interacting with Jesus, they stood afar off. They are not willing to come close to him. They're not willing to come close to him, but he is drawing nigh to them. You ever hear that verse that says that God is a, a present, a present help, a present help in the time of trouble. And he knows them that trust him. Watch it. Watch, watch the scriptures unfold and unveil that. So he goes to, and, and then, then he knows he's going to encounter these men. They meet him. They see him coming. They know who he is. They see him, him coming, and they begin to interact with the fact, even though we not, we're not where you are, Jesus, we are aware of who you are, and we, we, we're not going to come near you because of our condition. And in verse 3, it says, what they did do, we can't come near you, but it says, and they lifted up their voices. God is saying, I don't have to be, you don't have to be near me. All you got to do is recognize that I'm there. And if you call on me and you, and you seek me, he said, you'll find me. And it says, they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Watch these lepers show us what that means. Verse 13, it says, and they lifted up their voices. That means they turned into a choir and all of a sudden out of nowhere, these men started screaming and lifting up their voices. They weren't whispering. They were serious. They were determined because they had a need. They had a need. And he said, lifted up their voices and, and they said, listen, they said, Jesus, <laughs> that's Messiah, that's the one who said you should call his name Jesus. Matthew's gospel said the angel told Mary you shall call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. They call him Jesus. Then they call him a title, master. That's the Greek word Adonai, which means Lord. Jesus, we know you're the Lord. And then they ask him for one specific thing. They didn't say heal us. They didn't say, do, did, did, all they asked for was this. They said, have mercy on 
us. So that's where we want to kind of go today in our first series, our first lesson in this sermon series. I, I like to, I like to, I like to focus on that verse right there. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Hallelujah. And it says, and when he saw them, he said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priests. We're going to stop right there. Verse 13, that's our focal verse for this morning. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So this sermon, we'll call this, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. And I did read the latter part, the first portion of verse 14. It says, it says, when he saw them, he said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priest. Now, let's, 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 let's go a little deeper into this, 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 this it's a certain village. It's, 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 it's the place. And then we got the people. And, and, and then we have something that's made it so that they have come together. What brought these people to this place? What brought the 10 men together? And what we want to say is that the, these, 10, these, these 10 men were there and they were brought together by their, by their common misery, their common misery. They are suffering from something that they all have in common, in, in, in common. And what they have in common is they are lepers. So isn't it amazing how misery and suffering has a way of uniting individuals that have nothing else in common? I mean, come on, let's start looking, let's broaden our mind, broaden our minds and start applying this in, in, in relation to what's going on in, in our times, in, in your community, in our community, what we see going across the news, across the world, what's, what's going on. There's some things that are going on right now that are causing us to come together and to unify. And it seems that suffering and misery just has a way of uniting individuals that have nothing else in common. They have no cultural commonality. The things are going on. A lot of folk are not, we're not from the same culture, but yet there's some suffering going on today that we're all finding ourselves being subject to. So what is it? There's no common, there's no common, no, the cultures are not in common. We have no ethnic commonality. We have no racial commonality, no religious commonality. So what do we have in common? The word common, the, the word common, it means, listen, it means what do we share? Something that we all share, something that we mutually are subject to, that we're joined together by. It. It's a public issue. It's not a private issue. It's a corporate mission. It's happening to everybody, everywhere, all the time, and it's impacting all of us that makes it so that we have reason to unite. Yeah, we, we, we can't come together on, on, on racial equality. We can't come together on, on, on show, social injustice. But what we do find ourselves, no matter what a person's disposition is, no matter what their mindset is, there's some things where we find ourselves standing in the same lines, having to participate in the same events. We're all having to find ourselves wearing masks, uh, experiencing social distancing, the thing that we have in common that has made it so that we, we are sharing the same misery is that in this context of what I'm speaking, the coronavirus, the mutations and everything have made it so all everybody, everybody across the world, I don't care who you are, where you are, everybody is experiencing a common situation that's produced misery and suffering and that's put us in a position of caution and concern, and we must take heed to it. Otherwise, it has it, it is making it so people are dying, people are getting sick, and it's a serious threat. But what it is, though, it's one thing that despite all the division, it's brought us together in an inconspicuous degree of unity. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? We're united in the cause, even though our different situations are causing us to experience the, the, the violence of 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 of. of of, of, of gun laws where people are being murdered and situations where people are experiencing uh, crime and, and, and all types of violence and abuses and, and all kinds of, uh, of things that are just causing major degrees of unrest. But despite what it is, no matter what your color is, no matter what your race is, no matter what your 
your your nationality, no matter what your your your, your religious fil- affiliation. The common thing that we have is that there are some things that everybody everybody's experiencing that's causing our minis- our misery. And what it is is that even though even though in the midst of these ten, we, we can see that there 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 is some diverse diversity because it says he went through Galilee and also to, to, to uh, and Samaria and Samaria. Well, Samaria, there was one of the 10 that was a Samaritan. That means that they don't have anything in common. He had nothing in common with the other nine. They were Jews. They don't have any kind of Jews and Samaritans have nothing to do together. But because of this common plight, they're living together in this place, in this time of crisis, in this time of calamity. And what it is, they found themselves having to create some type of common ground. And despite their differences, they have an unusual allegiance. There's an unusual allegiances that that uh, that exist amongst these 10 individuals. They have an unusual, they're unusual allies. They come together to fight together for this cause. And somehow or another, despite the division and the differences and the conflict and the confusion, they've come together in the midst of their, their, their leprosy and they lifted up their voices together in unity on one behalf, on behalf of all of them. And they're talking to the one that has made it very clear that despite your situation, conditions that make it so we have to, we, there's, there's isolation, conditions of isolation, conditions of quarantine, conditions of exile, Listen, I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of us are being isolated. A lot of us are quarantined. A lot of us are experiencing degrees of exile just because of the fact of what's going on in the world we live in and that people and that, 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 that the, the hearts of people are getting worse and worse and people are doing more and more hideous things that cause us to feel like you got to take, you got to, you can't just do everything out there like you used to. You got to be more concerned about where you go. You got to be concerned about who's around. And sometimes you, some people feel like I just, I'm just not, I'm going home. Have you ever been there? I've been in my car, went to the store, some sometimes traffic start getting crazy. People start doing road rage and all that stuff. I say, you know what? It's time to go home. It's it's time to go home because things are getting out of control and I'm being subject. So I need to quarantine myself or get myself to back to where where I feel is a a, a safe place. So so the other thing I want to do is in verse twelve. So he goes to this certain village, but then it says that these men, they stood afar off. They stood afar off because they had a condition that made it so that they were, leprosy is, is an incurable disease that anyone that has been diagnosed with leprosy, they have been declared by the law in the book of Leviticus. It talks about, in, uh, in Leviticus, it talks about how these individuals are ceremonially unclean. They, they, they have to be separated. They have an incurable disease and leprosy, when a person is leprous, they have to be separated. They have to be separated from their families and they have to be separated from society. And they lift up their voice and they say, they, 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 they say to Jesus, they say, Master, have mercy on us. So here's the first question I wanna, I wanna rise. I wanna, I wanna start with this question. What is mercy. What is mercy? Mercy is compassion or forgiveness extended to someone who deserves punishment or harm. Mercy is undeserved pardon. Mercy is undeserved pardon. What struck me in the and in these individuals asking Jesus to have mercy on them, uh, these lepers they they are, are far off. Jesus is nowhere near them, and he doesn't touch them. He doesn't lay hands on them. He doesn't even he doesn't even speak to the leprosy. He responds to the plea of them asking him for mercy. I really like to stop right there and say, you know what? There was a song that was out. When we were coming up in the in, 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 uh, uh, OD, it was it, it said what the world needs now is love, sweet love. I'm here to say that today, not only does the world need love, but in the midst of that love, God's love, the world what the world needs today is God's mercy. We need to understand what mercy is because if we find out and understand what mercy is, that's what we need. Mercy is this. It says it says it says it says um it says um mercy. 
uh, it, it, mercy is 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 a count is a counterbalance to the description of humanity being rich in sin. When when it comes to the sins that are plaguing us, we're asking for Congress, the Senate, the President, the votes. We're asking for people to try to fix the situations that people are subject where that we're subjecting ourselves to and we're actually focusing our attention on the wrong focus we're, we're focusing on people but what we should be really doing is understanding that only god only god is rich in mercy only a god who's rich in mercy can understand or even come up with a plan to save and redeem people that are that are dead in sin, dead in trespasses and sins. Let's 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 go a little bit. Let's go a little a little a little. A little. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit this verse here. Uh, there's a verse that's in um in in um in uh in Ephesians Ephesians and chapter two. It starts talking. It says in Ephesians chapter two. It says, "And you were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked. You once walked following the course." of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and here we go, and we're by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. That verse brings us into the common thing that we all have. What it, what is it that makes it so that we really, really, it's not coronavirus. The thing that is pushing us into a common thread or a place of maybe like these 10 lepers of where we're communing or in a, in a certain village, in a certain, we're living in a certain environment. The world itself has turned into a certain environment that, that causes us to, to find out what it is that we're being subject to. We're looking at the, the outward appearance. The outward appearance of leprosy is rotting skin, but the outward expression of our condition is coming from inside. It's an inward condition that's producing an outward expression. Let me break that down. The Bible says right here in Ephesians 2, it says, and you were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked. Paul is talking to the church in the uh, church of Ephesus and letting them know what their past condition was before they got experienced the mercy of God. He says, you were dead in trespasses and sins. That's the condition. Sin. We are all born in sin, shaped in iniquity. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And when that expression, when that sin expresses itself, it expresses itself as we find ourselves not following God, but we start finding, following the course of the world, marching according to the beat of the world, and we actually are following the prince of the power of the air. People are looking at this whole thing from the wrong mindset. We're looking at the people. We're looking at the conditions. We're looking at the symptoms of the people. But the Bible says we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. We're wrestling against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. Satan desires to have us and to sift us as weak. And as we follow according to the course and his leading and his guiding, he desires to have us and to sift us, to kill us, to steal from us, and to destroy us. But what we find ourselves, then we ignore the sin and we just focus on the symptoms. Nobody wants to talk about the fact of what sin is doing to mankind. No one wants to acknowledge God's mindset as it pertains to what is the real issue? What is the real problem? We're focusing on the, 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 the leprosy, the outward symptoms of sickness, but we're not focusing on the cause or the root reason, the cause of what's actually causing the leprosy. And that's why we're carrying out verse 4, Ephesians 2, verse 4. We're carrying out the desires of the body and the mind. The things that we're seeing people doing, the things that people are thinking. It's as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. People are thinking wickedness. People are thinking evil. Sin is literally expressing itself. And, 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 and it says we were by nature. Look, it says it carrying out the desires of the body and the mind and we're by nature. Be careful there. By nature, children of wrath. By nature. We're not doing this because people are thinking about it. People are not going into schools and killing people, killing. Kids are not. Look, parents are not buying guns for their children. And then their child goes in and murders people in a school and, and wounds 
others because they're just thinking, no, this is a nature thing. This is, it's, it's the nature of individuals that, that, that the sin in them causes them to not even do what's logical, but to even dis, but it causes them to dishonor themselves between themselves and they do the thing that's unseemly. These things that we're experiencing right now is the outward manifestation and the expression of sin in our members. And nobody wants to recognize the sin. We just want to focus on the symptoms. We want to try to heal the symptoms. We want to talk about the symptoms. We want to talk about what causes individuals to do what they do. Murder, rape, incest, crime, violence, all different kinds. Uh, theft, people going in and mass, masses going in stores. and This is the manifest, the beloved. We're seeing the outward expression of the sin nature taking its toll and making it so it's pushing us and forcing us to have to, to come together and to possibly recognize it's uniting us in ways that we don't want to ex experience unity. We don't want to be we don't want to be united on the on being victims. We don't want to be united on being subject to violence. That's the, that's not the unity that God wants us to experience. And he says it's like the rest of mankind. All of mankind is experiencing this. This is not just going on in America. This is going on in Afghanistan. It's going on in Pakistan. It's going on in Russia. It's going on in Israel. It's going on all over the world. It's going in places that you don't know about. There is violence and sin is expressing itself in the hearts and the minds of people. But in the midst of it all, I love it. I love it because God does not allow us to keep focusing on the problem. God does not allow us to stay in the leprosy. Jesus shows up in this town, in this village specifically, because he's coming to do what only he can do. The lepers have come to a position and a condition in their mind where they found out they're hopeless. They're, they can't fix themselves. Can't nobody else fix them. The society has ostracized them. They can't come into community. They can't even be around their families. They've been ostracized. They've been made outcast because of something that is not even because of their own control. It's out of their control. It's being controlled. It's being caused by a disease that is incurable, a disease that is incurable, and that disease is making it so they are finding themselves being victimized and isolated. That's the focus of the leprosy. But I like where we want to go today. Today, we want to go there. We want to go here. Verse, look, in Ephesians, it says, look, it says, but God, but God. See that word, but God. Ephesians chapter 2. It says, but God, but God, who is rich in mercy, but God who is rich in mercy. Why is God rich in mercy? Why is God rich, rich in compassion, rich in forgiveness? Why is God rich in extending to someone Something that they, despite whatever they deserve, the leprosies made it so they deserve to be ostracized and separated. But despite whatever it is, God, Jesus is showing that despite whatever man feels these lepers deserve, God is looking beyond all that separation, all that banishment and seeing what they really need. He's showing compassion. He's compassionate. That's what's missing. We're missing the heart and the mind and the spirit of God moving in us in a way where we can experience the love of God, demonstrate the love of God, and to love one another just like God loves us. Jesus shows up to this town to demonstrate to all his disciples that I'm having compassion on the ones that y'all not having compassion on. I'm coming to literally to seek and to save those individuals that are here desperately lost. And I'm here to tell you, there's nothing like being banished. There's nothing like being ostracized. There's nothing like really feeling like there's nothing that I can do to help or to change my plight. Have you ever been there to where things are going on in your life and you feel like, there's nothing that I can do to change this. There's nothing that anyone can do to reverse this, to fix this. This is, have you ever, have you ever said, well, well my, you throw your hands up, well, that's just the way it is. Well, God doesn't do that. This verse in Ephesians is very powerful because it says, but, but God, despite the situation, Jesus is showing up to these lepers to say, but lepers, but, 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 
but, but, but, but, but men, but God, despite whatever or wherever you found yourself being, God being rich in mercy supersedes all these different pre-existing conditions, limitations, and, and times where we feel like it's impossible. But God being rich in mercy, why is God rich in mercy? Because of the great love with which he loves, to, loves, which, which he loves us. He loves us so much that even when we were dead in our trespasses, even though sin is on the rampage and everything is becoming exceedingly sinful, like just really, really, just perilous times, even when these things were going on, Jesus Christ came and shows up to be able to bring and to bear on us the very thing that we need in order for all these situations to be reversed He's able to quicken, to make alive. He did not, he, you don't, Jesus doesn't have to show up and touch you. Uh, all you got to do is do like the lepers and cry out and say, God, have mercy on me. There is a verse, there is a, a verse that I, I, I really want to deal with just a little bit, just a little bit as it pertains to uh, this, this whole idea of, of this high priest, this, this, this position of who Jesus is. Jesus comes in and when he, when he shows up to these individuals, he, they say, have mercy on us. Even in the midst of it all, what Jesus shows them is that he has the ability to demonstrate, to give us new birth and to give us a living hope through the fact that he died for us on the cross. And because he's rich in mercy, he makes it so that every day in our lives, there are new mercies every morning. And we, don't, we never have to fear that one day God's gonna get fed up with us or stop having patience working in our lives. We don't never have to worry that, that we have used up our portion of God's grace and kindness because of, of, of God because our God is rich in mercy. We don't have to think that he's forgot about, about us or that he, he doesn't care. He does care. And what he wants us to do, he wants us to literally look to him and do a simple thing, a simple thing. We need to call out in the midst of all that's going on and ask Jesus, the Lord, the master, have mercy. That's not a hard uh, request to fulfill. That is not a hard order to fill. It's simple. The lepers didn't do anything, but they did demonstrate. They didn't do anything but call out for Jesus to have mercy. I'm here to suggest that that right there is the absolute, that is the object lesson. That is our takeaway for this morning, that we can, we can be in a situation and, and complain about how everything is, but beloved, we need to return to Thanksgiving. And when we return to Thanksgiving, the first thing we need to do is we need to cry out for mercy so we can have a reason to thank God for how he and he alone can deliver us and make it so that the, the testimony will be clear that he's the one that did the same thing he did for these lepers. We need God to step in and do that for us in our, in our, in our communities. We need God to do that in, in our country. We need God to do that in the White House. We need God to do that in the House of Congress, in the House where the Senate. We need God to do that in my house. We need God to do that in your house. What we need is we need to come together and allow the circumstances and the situation to unite us in a common cry. That together, as we're on one accord, maybe you can't fix it. Maybe I can't change it. But what we can do, we can shift our focus from our situation and our circumstances, and we could do like the lepers and look to Jesus, recognize him, and do some proactivity. They started to approach him, and when they approached him, Jesus didn't say anything. They recognized where they needed to go. They started to approach him, and then they recognized who he is. They stayed afar from him. They still adhered to the Levitical law in terms of them keeping the distance. But what they said is, I might not be able to come close to you physically, but I can come close to you through my heart as my mouth 
begins, as my heart begins to speak through my heart, what did they do? This is what he, they did, and this is what we need to do. We need to call out to God. Not, not, not all the complexities. We don't need to go here, go there. No, no, no. All we need to do is open up our mouths and literally... The Bible says, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Beloved, what we need as a united community of similar leprosy and the situations that are causing us to unite in the cause of what we are subject to, we need to stop focusing on that and call on the one who's able to seek, not to seek, the one that's able to save, to rescue, to heal and deliver. We need to call on the mercy of God. We need to say, Lord, have mercy on us. So the first thing that we see is that Jesus sought these people out. And I say today, he's seeking us out. This message today expresses and explains, it demonstrates that God is concerned about us, that God is concerned about not just you, not just me. God is concerned about us. And because he's concerned about us, he wants us to call on him. So as he begins to deliver and he begins to seal, to save and to heal, he can let that healing that he does be a, a actual a testimony for all to see that God is able and that God is present and that God is heals. Can we come together today and look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith? Can we find ourselves humbling ourselves before the mighty hand of God and just simply no matter where you are, no matter what's going on in your life, despite all of that, I believe that the remedy for all of it is to call to the Lord and ask him to have mercy on us. With all heads bowed and all hearts yielded. God, you know, you're totally aware of all that we're being subject to, how sin is on the rampage and how we are finding ourselves in situations of desperation, being devoid of answers, being confronted with calamity, things that we've never experienced before, not knowing what to do or how to even respond. It's just different layers, one layer after another. But God, we know that in the midst of it all, you are the one who, who, who looks down and you come down low to save and to rescue. You sought us out today. You know where we are. But God, in the midst of it all, on behalf of our joint situation and even our personal conditions, we yield today and say, Lord, have mercy. God, do what you know needs to be done. Speak your word. Exercise your authority. And God, we pray that you will allow us to experience deliverance and that you would uh, allow us to see an outbreak of you coming in, God, to, to bring light and to bring rescue and to bring deliverance and to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captive free, to set at liberty, God, those of us that are, are bruised so much because of the condition of sin in our lives. God, we come before you, Lord, asking that you'd have mercy on us. We have sinned against you. And God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you forgive our sin and that you would heal the land. And we ask this blessing in Jesus' name. Maybe you're here under the sound of my voice and the conditions of sin in your life has been made manifest and that you realize that the only one that can save, deliver, and heal us from sin, the expression of it, and the outbreak of it in our lives is you. Lord Jesus, we know that you died on the cross for our sins. And we cry out, Lord, have mercy on us, for we have sinned against you. God, we come before you, Lord, saying, save us. 
I ask, oh God, I believe that you died on the cross, Jesus, for my sins. And if you believe that and you pray that prayer, we like to say that if you ask the Lord Jesus to forgive you for your sins and you repent, turn from the sin, turn to God, crying out, have mercy on me, Lord, save me. We believe that you will be saved and that God will give you a clean heart and renew a right spirit in you and that he'll save you from your sins. And we believe if you prayed that prayer that you're saved today, and we'd like to ask that you would continue to join yourself together, amen, with a, a church where you can grow and that you would continue to fellowship with us as we continue to look at God's word for direction, for deliverance, promises, and victory. We ask this blessing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We thank you this morning for fellowshipping with us around God's word. We were going into part two uh, next week. Amen. And we want to get into the, our next sermon title, which would be Show Yourself Unto the Priest. Show Yourself Unto the Priest. Thanks again on behalf of Sanctuary Baptist Fellowship Church. We'd like to, again, thank you for fellowship with us. We ask that you would share uh, this Facebook Live uh, opportunity with your Facebook friends. Uh, click your share button and share with your friends and allow, invite them to come and fellowship with us. We also are asking that you would be prayerfully and, and, and join together with us as we prayerfully have come seeking God's face for our new church home, our new church location. And if you're there today and you desire to become a part of our church family and our fellowship, just put something in your comment. Just say, I, I'm, I'm interested, and trust me, we'll be able to follow up. Our website is under construction. Uh, on our, our next lessons, Lord willing, we'll be able to send you there. You'll be able to send in your comment. You'll be able to send us information so we can correspond directly with you. But for right now, just say, I'm interested, and be prayerful for us that you can pray for God to bless us with a new church home and that you can pray that God will use you to be a part of our ministry, our mission, and our vision. So on behalf of First Lady uh, Joyce Lester, my, my wonderful wife, we uh, thank you for fellowshipping with us. Thank you for spending this time with us. And we say good morning to all of you. And as we always say, walk with the King today and be a blessing as we call on God to have mercy. In Jesus' name, amen.